Hey, my workbench is messy. Let's look at some radios. These are very small transistor radios. Delightfully small. I think these were sold under a lot of different brands. These are both branded Victoria. Look at that. Shine. Oh, perfect polish. Little six transistor radio. It's got this salmon or coral color. Coral! Both of them are damaged slightly. Uh, if we take a look here. Yeah, this one's got a chip on the top here, so it opens up. Pretty compact inside. It's got that sort of 1960s soldering. Little wires bodged around. Tiny speaker. Tiny, ooh, is this upside down? Nope. Tiny schematic. It has a date. 1964-210. So it's from around 1964. Let's take a look at this one. The identical twin. This one's got a little bit of a dent there. Otherwise, it's also in nice shape. And this one, if I remember right, yeah, this one is cracked along the bottom of the back cover. So this cover actually stays on a little bit better. It still clips just a little bit there, but it is also broken. Unfortunately. 1964 210. Okay. So someone just bought two of these at the same time. This one looks different. What? Okay. This goes with this one. This goes here. Let's take a look. I don't want to scratch these up on the workbench surface. Yeah, so this one's got all these wires bodged. Kind of look like bodge wires. And this one doesn't have them. But the soldering job is also pretty nasty on this. Oh God, look at, look at this, Jesus. Just, just globbed all over. Oh, oh man, look at that. This is horrendous. 1960s, like all of these are round. Um, I know when I was younger and I actually, I actually took a class on soldering, believe it or not. And they taught high reliability soldering where you don't want a big ball balling out like that. You kind of want, you kind of want a bit of a concave surface or a concave shape between the um, the leg of the part going through the board and then the surface of the board. You want it to be sort of that nice concave and apparently that gives you the best connection or most reliable. I don't remember. This is not it. This is just glob it on and do whatever. This is even worse. I was, I was going to say I can't really figure out which one's worse, but this one's worse. So let's Get a battery. Hmm, Duraleek. And we'll try this one out first, because this one looks the worst. All right, battery's in. Let's see, so we got this is on this side here. Something, anything? Stand by. Must have been a loose connection inside. Sports 
show. Hmm. That's not very strong. I'm going to boot up my radio station and see how well it picks that up. Okay, I've noticed an issue. Let's get on a station here. Volume doesn't go down all the way. So watch what happens when I tune the station in. So that's off. Volume lowest. That's weird. Okay, that's bizarre. Let's go to try the other one. Okay, this one seems to... the volume works correctly, it's just quiet. That's at max volume. But I think this one has a better chance just because of the uh, volume working correctly. There's going to be some other screwy thing with this one. Uh, let's take a look inside. I'm expecting caps. It's always caps, isn't it? Yeah, these old 1960s plastics are falling apart. This was dangling around inside, and I think it was the piece that went there. Oh well. That's really easy. There's one screw. Uh, I can show you on this one because this one's the same. There's one screw here that just screws into the back of the speaker. And then this whole circuit just, just comes right out. Like super easy. And it is chock full of capacitors. Got one, two, three, four. Are these, or are these old school looking transistors? What do they look like? Old school looking transistors, I think. Being a six transistor set, you've got one here, one here, three here, and come on, focus. Oh, yeah, one there, it's just painted yellow for some reason. Oh God, that just moved. <laughs> The assembly of this thing is atrocious. Your dinky little speaker output transformer there. And then for another stage, or yeah, look at the schematic, and we can see exactly what all this does. It'll focus. No, nah, it won't focus. So I know this thing isn't the best, but 49 ohm ESR, 10% loss, 25 microfarad. And this is a 10 microfarad, 10 volt cap. A frustrating one too. See that plus and that minus? This label is meant for a, I think it's radial. Radial is the one with a, a terminal on either side. Not axial, no, axial is the one. This is a radial. So they put the label for that. So I, doesn't that, I had to measure the voltage across this before I removed it to know which way is positive because this label is fucking useless. How do these old radios even work with this many components that are just, just toast? So this is a ELEC cap? Yeah, ELEC cap, 30 microfarad. Oh wait, that's the brand. Eberson, ha. <laughs> All right, that's getting replaced too. Say this is what the label's supposed to look like. It's supposed to just have a single plus. No minus, just the plus. And that plus on this one lines up with one of the terminals. How nice. 
and that actually matches the voltage I measured across it too. How very nice. Still bad though, very bad. And just for comparison, here's what the replacement's going to be. It, it's a 33 microfarad, the other one was 30. Alright, capacitors have been replaced, all of them. All, what was it, four? Two 10 microfarad and two 30s. All of them tested horribly, <laughs> like not even borderline, just awful. Uh, put some contact cleaner in this, tightened some connections that were loose, and then gave it as much of an alignment as I could. These were just full of wax, and without just completely stripping the slot and the cores, I was able to get it slightly better. The top end was a little bit deaf before. It still is, but it's better. So let's do this one-handed, maybe. So first off, you'll notice it's way louder. Like, let me turn this up to max. So I can turn this down to a minimum here. This your home for the latest odds in live and play for action on every sport. Canada's Ozmaker, brought to you by Mohawk Online. And she too criticizes the targets for emissions reduction. As you can see, nice clean volume control, no crackling. Um, it picks up all the stations, the typical stations around here. Mine at 580, 680. Uh, there's like an 800 station, 990, and 1290. Those are the big AM stations around here. I mean, for a cheap six transistor radio sitting in my basement, I mean, that's... It's kind of what I would expect from it. Nice and loud, nice and clear. So I'm going to put it back together and then maybe give it a try in a better, better environment. Not surrounded by, you know, fluorescent lights and exhaust fans and stuff like that. But uh, overall, I'm happy not to go for the immediate thing that everyone goes for, with, which is capacitors. But in this case, capacitors, man. I'm expecting the other one will be the same. I'm not sure about that weird volume issue. There might be more to it, but at least I got one of these coral colored radios working again. Coral! Anyway, thanks for watching my video on these little AM transistor radios. I, I, they're, they're cheap, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I might just keep the other one unrepaired for now, just to keep it in its original state and maybe save that for a uh, future repair. But I'm happy this one's working quite well. Anyway, that's it. Bye.